Hey, man. Hey, how y'all doing here today? And uh, good to see that we're already starting off with a real bang. All right, yeah. Uh, apparently, this whole Juneteenth uh, holiday, you celebrate it by shooting off fireworks the last hour from 11 to midnight and in the first hour of the next day from midnight till 1 so no one gets any sleep and then I go to here on Facebook I know I'm complaining but you gotta let me vent a little bit uh, get Facebook all set up ready to go this is gonna be good we're and as soon as I hit the start button I get back over here behind the pulpit I'm waiting I'm waiting I'm waiting gonna start Nope, it decides i am done something I'm not allowed to do. <laughs> Story of my life. Can't win for losing. Oh, well, at any rate, uh, we are we are glad to be here today and uh, looking forward to today's services, both here at uh, Garage Baptist as well as uh, in a couple hours uh, over in Lamont there at uh, Welcome Hill Missionary Baptist Church. So uh, you all be in prayer for us today. And uh, the folks over there at Welcome Hill, as they are still looking for a pastor, amen, as well as Walkerton uh, Baptist there in uh, Walkerton, uh, Indiana. You can pray for them as well for the same reason. And all the other churches out there that are looking for a pastor, that they will find the right man that God would have for them. Uh, let's not forget all these upcoming VBSs and uh, uh, need to see these kids uh, get saved and uh, start a actual fellowship with Jesus afterwards so they can grow up. We we are sorely lacking in the generations coming up here. And uh, it's showing in our churches. Our, our, you look at the congregations around you. And uh, there's getting to be some uh, disparity there for the youth. So uh, let's you know really push these VBSs. You know, kids need to get saved. Everybody needs to get saved. But uh, yeah, we really need... To uh, start getting some youth back into our churches. Amen. So let's go ahead and open up here in a word of prayer. Our most gracious Father in heaven, we do thank you, Lord, for all that you've done for us and all that you're going to do. And uh, we pray, Father, for your blessings upon this day and help us, Father, please, to follow your holy will. We do thank you, God, for loving us and saving us. And we do ask you, Father, please, to help us, Lord, to present the service here today the way that you'd have for us to. It would be a help to each and every one that is tuning in, whether it be live or uh, down the road, uh, there on the YouTube channel, sermon audio, whatever the case would be. We thank you, God, for loving us and saving us. We do pray, Lord, for your blessings upon this day. Help us, Father, please. We ask, Father, for uh, uh, physical needs, uh, financial needs, spiritual needs. Uh, Henry Allen and uh, his health issues. My cousin Cindy, she's still recuperating from her surgery. And uh, certainly me with that... Uh, uh, the knee issue there after uh, this past week. <laughs> One more log out of fire there, I guess you could say. But uh, we certainly can use some healing there. And uh, we certainly know a lot of people that uh, financial issues going on there, Father. And we do pray, Lord, for bills to get paid and uh, uh, jobs to be had. Yeah. Uh, we do pray, Lord, for those that are uh, churches that are looking for a pastor, those people out there who are looking to find the church that you'd have for them to be at, that they, they would find it, Lord, that they would be willing to follow your Holy Spirit and his guidance to where they need to go. We pray, Lord, for your blessings upon the Garage Baptist here and, and uh, the other uh, channels that we're on to try to get your word out there. Uh, we know you promise that your word will not return unto you void, that it will accomplish what you've set it out there to do. And we're asking you, Father, please to help us to do our part. We love you, Lord, in Jesus' name we do pray. Amen and amen. So I uh, thought we'd sing this morning, start off with that song at Calvary. <clears throat> Years I spent in vanity and pride, caring not my Lord was crucified. Knowing not it was for me he died on Calvary. Mercy there was great and grace was free. Pardon there was multiplied to me. There my burden saw found liberty at Calvary. By God's word at last my sin I learned. Then I trembled at the law I'd spurned. 
till my guilty soul employing turn to Calvary. Mercy there was great and grace was free. Pardon there was multiplied to me. There my burden soul found liberty at Calvary. Now I've given Jesus everything. Now I gladly own him as my king. Now my raptured soul can only sing of Calvary. Mercy there was great and grace was free. Pardon there was multiplied to me. There my burden soul found liberty at Calvary. Oh, the love that drew salvation's plan. Oh, the grace that brought it down to man. Oh, the mighty gulf that God did span at Calvary. Mercy there was great and grace was free. Pardon there was multiplied to me. There my burden soul found liberty at Calvary. Hey man, hey man. <clears throat> How about when we all get to heaven? Looking forward to that day. How about you? <clears throat> Sing the wondrous love of Jesus. Sing his mercy and his grace. In the mansions bright and blessed, he'll prepare for us a place. Oh, when we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. When we all see my Jesus, we'll sing and shout the victory. While we walk the pilgrim pathway, clouds will overspread the sky. But when traveling days are over, not a shadow, not a sigh. Oh, when we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. When we all see Jesus, we'll sing and shout the victory. <clears throat> Let us then be true and faithful, trusting, serving every day. And just one glimpse of him in glory will the toys of life repay. Oh, when we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. Oh, when we all see Jesus, we'll sing and shout the victory. Onward to the prize before us, soon his beauty will behold. Soon the pearly gates will open, we shall tread the streets of gold. Oh, when we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. Oh, when we all see Jesus, we'll sing and shout the victory. Amen, amen. Looking forward to that day. It's coming. It's closer today than it was yesterday. Amen, amen. All right, take your Bibles if you would, please, and go with us over to the book of Acts, chapter number 11. And we certainly do apologize. We uh, tried tagging people there in uh, on Facebook, and Facebook decided, nope, you're not allowed to tag something. And uh, I'm assuming there's somebody somehow, some way that uh, doesn't want to be tagged. So it just kicked me back out, and we had to start all over again. No time to tag people. So I uh, do apologize to those who didn't get tagged that normally do. <laughs> But Acts chapter number 11, uh, we will read the first three verses here this morning. <clears throat> Hopefully uh, we'll be getting back here into our series on the, the forward progress of the church. 
Uh, Acts chapter number 11, where we will be picking back up here. So the Bible says here in Acts 11, verse number 1, And the apostles and brethren that were in Judea heard that the Gentiles had also received the word of God. That sounds like that should be good there. Okay, let's keep reading. Verse 2, And when Peter was come up to Jerusalem, now just to, to catch you up real quickly, he was in Joppa, went to Caesarea, and now has come down here to Jerusalem. They that were of the circumcision, in other words the Jews, contended with him. They didn't like it. Saying, Thou winnest into men uncircumcised, and didst eat with them. In other words, Peter, you went and you did something you're not supposed to do. You didn't bother checking with anyone to get approval. We got us a problem here. Seems, Peter, you just don't know what is best. You don't know what God is really trying to do here. And so, Peter, we're going to have to straighten you out. So, Lord, being our helper today, we'd like to bring our sermon on, on this uh, needful topic of when others, quote-unquote, know best. Heavenly Father, we do thank you, Lord, for all that you've done for us and all that you're going to do. And we do pray, Lord, for your blessings upon this day. We ask you, Father, please, to help us to uh, say just what needs to be said here in the sermon, nothing more, nothing less. And help us, Father, please, to follow your holy will. We do pray, Lord, for each and every one here in the sound of my voice that they will get exactly what it is that they need out of the sermon here today. And it will be a help and a blessing to each and every one. And yeah, maybe someone here, uh, this will be what convinces them that they too need to be saved and that they would make today that glorious day that they accept Jesus as their Lord and Savior. We do thank you, God, for loving us and saving us. In the precious name of Jesus, we do pray. Amen and amen. So when others know best, it, it always seems like there's at least one in the crowd that uh, they happen to know what is best. Uh, they seem to have some sort of, uh, well, at least they think they seem to have some sort of private phone number for God, or, or obviously they are more spiritually minded than you are. Uh, they've got some extra special perception of the Bible, and and, and doggone it, they, they've got tradition on their side. They've got them a formal education, uh, whatever it takes. They know best and they are going to impart to you their wisdom Peter comes back here to Joppa or from Joppa after going to Caesarea to Jerusalem here and they instantly start challenging him now he's Peter he's the de facto leader of the apostles and yet He's the one that they decided to personally challenge, positionally challenge him as well. Peter, you, you're slipping. You're not where you're supposed to be with God, obviously. You're going into these uncircumcised. You're going into the Gentiles there. Don't you know salvation is, uh, is of God and it's only meant for us Jews? Uh, the world can't be saved. Hmm. And if they think that they are right and that you are wrong, they are going to make sure that they give you their quote-unquote rock-solid evidence to put you in your place. And that's exactly what they were planning on doing to Peter here. Look, let's reread verse 3. Thou wentest into men uncircumcised and did eat with them. You broke the law, Peter. You're not supposed to be eating with the uncircumcised. You're not supposed to be fellowshipping with the uncircumcised. Well, Peter, you better have a good 
solid exclamation for us here. Because we don't care about your explanation. We want an exclamation. And what we want you to exclaim is, I'm sorry I messed up. I'm sorry I'm going to come correct. Don't worry about it. It'll never happen again. It was a mistake. Peter comes with an explanation. As we got to make sure that things are done God's way, Peter says, and not man's way. Man tries his best to get his way as often as he can, and he will destroy anything and everything in the process to accomplish what he wants. Or God, he's a gentleman. But he wants to get things done his way. That way the proper results are being witnessed. To begin here when we see that we've got others who know, quote unquote, know best. We see we got some feasibility checkers. Uh, go back to the verse 2. It says, And when Peter was come up to Jerusalem, they that were of the circumcision contended with him. The, 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 the Hebrews, the, the Jews, the, those proselytes who, who've decided to become uh, Jews in every way that the law commands in order for them to become uh, Jewish in nature and all that. They may not have the DNA, but doggone it, they are going to have the religion lined up here. Peter kind of messed up, I suppose you could say, because he went to Jerusalem after Caesarea, and instead of going back to Joppa. Now, as far as we know, the Holy Spirit's guiding him, saying, you need to go back to Jerusalem. And I truly believe that the Holy Spirit was leading him to go back to Jerusalem. And that the men who went with him from Joppa to Caesarea, the Holy Spirit led them to also go back to Jerusalem because things needed to be set into motion here. And, and oftentimes, we, we will look at things and we'll say, man, I... I a step has been skipped here, but yet it's the prompting of the Holy Spirit. So when the world's sitting here saying, we've got us a problem, we need to be even more reliant upon God and His direction, church. Not our gut feelings, not what our heart is telling us, but what God is showing us to do, what God is instructing us to say. Now, these men, they were confident that they know what God intends. And that you should be checking with them first. I think these men here would have been more than happy uh, to have had Peter get receive the vision of the, of the sheep being lowered down there, filled with all the animals, the voice telling them, rise, kill, and eat. And, and the three men come knocking on the door. Hey, we're looking for Simon Peter here in Simon's, the, the Tanner's house. Uh, there's a centurion there in Caesarea. He wants to have a word with you. And Peter would have said, hold on, I got to go check with the council back in Jerusalem. I think they would have been more than satisfied with that. Because I believe that their answer would have been, Peter, don't you dare be that stupid. He's a centurion. That means he's a Gentile. He's a Roman. Uh, his nation has, has conquered Israel here. We don't go in and associate with those people. Because these men were certain that different is wrong. Ain't tradition ain't what the Torah teaches ain't what the prophets taught us ain't what the scribes and Pharisees have been teaching over the years problem is all of their ain'ts ain't biblical because <laughs> when you go back there you get in the Old Testament you find that God told Israel they were to be a light to the world why are they going to be a light to the world unless they're going to be bringing the world to God that's why they're not the fact checkers they're the feasibility checkers it, 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 this, this ain't kosher Peter God ain't worried about what's kosher now God's worried about people being saved amen salvation is to whosoever believeth in him 
Is that not what Jesus said there in John 3, 16? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. He didn't say that, that whosoever is a Jew should believe in him. Gentiles excluded. He said whosoever. So their feasibilities failed them. But when Peter is now standing here before these others who know best and they're feasibility checkers, may I say that he had a foundation of account ready to go. Verse 4, but Peter rehearsed the matter from the beginning and expounded or explained it by order unto them, saying, in other words, he said here, the matter from the beginning, he started at the beginning. He didn't break into the middle of the story. He didn't break in at the very end of the story. They already knew the ending of the story. They had a pretty good idea about the middle. He, he said, Let me, hold your horses. I want to start at the beginning of what's going on here. And I want to tell you about how I was there in, a, in Simon the Tanner's house, a place I, as a Jew, I shouldn't have been in to begin with because tanning, dealing with leather, dead animals. I shouldn't have been there, but I was still there. And while I was up on the roof waiting on them to get done making supper because I was hungry, the Lord sent down this sheet there, and three times he told me, rise, kill, and eat. And I didn't understand it. It blew my mind. I went so far as to say, not so, Lord. Jam two thoughts together that don't go together. Talk about an oxmoron right there. Not so, and Lord. It's always, yes, Lord. Otherwise, he's not truly Lord. But Peter says, let me start here at the beginning. And then he begins to rehearse to them what happened there with the, the sheep. And, and then the men show up. And then he goes to Caesarea. And, and he's preaching there. And the Holy Spirit suddenly falls down upon these same men that he's preaching to. They, they are Romans. They're Gentiles. Their families are there. And they all got saved. And Peter says, and I know they got saved because, hey, the same thing that happened to us during the day of Pentecost happened to them. But he had to start by laying the foundation down. Don't start building on the second floor if you ain't even got the, the foundation laid. <laughs> You're up there in the air, nothing underneath you. That only works for Wile E. Coyote. <laughs> and he always ends up falling. But after the foundation has been laid, the, the foundation of the account is the, okay, this is what has led me to this particular moment here where I believe that this is the direction that the Lord has been leading me. We go on to the next step. Peter here familiarized those on hand. It's verse number 11. And behold, immediately there were three men already come unto the house where I was sent from Caesarea unto me. Now you go back there to chapter 10, verse number 23. Then called he them in and lodged them. And on the morrow, Peter went away with them, and certain brethren from Joppa accompanied them. In other words, it's supper time. Peter invites these men, these three men from Caesarea, to come on in. You're going to stay the night, and we're going to eat supper here. There's plenty of vittles for you all as well, and let's talk. Let's find out what's going on. Let's get familiar as to what the circumstances are here that God is trying to get accomplished. Because all of a sudden, you boys come looking for me, but yet you're not here to arrest me? I'm curious. So he got familiar with the circumstances. They got familiar with the circumstances. The people who were there in the house, six of these men are going to accompany Peter over to Caesarea and then accompany him to Jerusalem. They all got good and familiar. You're going to start, start doing something. Guess what? While you're praying about it, start talking with others, getting them to pray with you about it. Hey, what's, what's going to happen here? We need to be, this is the direction I believe the Lord is leading me in. How can we accomplish this? What would the Lord have us to do? Help me come and pray alongside me on this matter so that we can get things done. No one wants to just jump in without having any sort of groundwork laid, without having to have some sort of support system in place. 
It's one thing to sit here and, and Lord's leading me to, to put together a garage Baptist. It'd be another thing altogether to, to say, you know what, I need to fill out some uh, 501c3 charity paperwork and, and get started on all that. Uh, that's a st <laughs> If those steps ever start coming, uh, I don't see them coming, but if they were ever do, guess what? I'm going to be trying to familiarize some other people who can come alongside and help me. Some people who would have an idea as to how to properly fill out the paperwork and whatnot. Some people who would be praying with me about it. Some people, hey, you know what? Is it even feasible for us to even have anything going on here at this location? I'm going to want to make sure I do right. I'm not going to go to some know-it-all who's going to sit there and say, well, this, 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 and this. But the Lord is directing me to do this. I don't care what the Lord's directing you. I'm telling you this, this, and this. No, no. We got to work together here. Peter says, hey, look, I got six witnesses here with me on this subject. I got six people here who can testify under oath that the Lord directed me in this direction here. You may think you know what is best. You may think that you know what needs to be done. But I'm telling you, this is what the Lord led. And I've got the witnesses to prove it. Speaks back to when the Lord was sending them out in pairs. You know, he could go out by twos into the different villages and let them know that I'm coming. You go out witnessing. It's always good to, to go in pairs. Why? So is that you've got people who can protect each other's testimony. Well, nothing happened there that was wrong because I'm here as a witness. In the mouth of two or three witnesses, it shall be established. Because we are familiar with what is going on. When we come together and start praying about a particular uh, issue on hand, we're coming together. We're familiarizing one another so as that we can pray in unison on what needs to be done. No matter how big or how small, no matter how grand or how terrible the direction is. If we're doing it right, it means we're coming together to serve the Lord on it the right way. And since we're going to do it that way, we're going to find that Father knows best. Yeah. Verse 16. <clears throat> then remembered I the word of the Lord, how that he said, John indeed baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost. For as much then as God gave them the like gift as he did unto us, who believed on the Lord Jesus Christ, what was I that I could withstand God. Uh, like I said, back there in chapter number 10. Uh, let me see if I can find it real quick because I did not mark it. Uh, huh, immediately. Uh, mouth and the word of God. Uh, I know it's in here. I do apologize. I should have marked it and I didn't think about it. Uh, and they have the circumcision. Okay, here it is. Uh, verse number 43. Let's back up to there. Uh, chapter 10. To him give all the prophets witness that through his name whosoever believeth in him shall receive remission of sins. While Peter yet spake these words, the Holy Ghost fell on all of them which heard the word. And they of the circumcision which believed were astonished as many as came with Peter, because that on the Gentiles also was poured out the gift of the Holy Spirit, or the Holy Ghost. For they heard them speak with tongues and magnify God. Then answered Peter. Can any man forbid them water that these should not be baptized which have received the Holy Ghost as we? And he commanded them to be baptized in the name of the Lord. Then prayed they him to tarry certain days. And, he, and of course he ends up tarrying certain days. But they recognized that the Holy Spirit had come down upon them. They had the gift of tongues. Now if you remember back there uh, when we were in Acts chapter number 2. We talked about tongues very specifically. In this case... Tongues simply was their ability to miraculously speak another language that they had never spoken before. Nowadays, us speaking in tongues, you're either crazy or you have learned the other language. Hablo espanol. Uh, mal. <laughs> uh, no, I really don't speak Spanish very well, in other words. But we find here that what happened is, as Father knows best, he promised... John baptized with water. 
But I'm telling you now, you all who are going to get saved, you're going to be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Now, nowadays, we don't get you know the ability to miraculously speak in tongues, but we do still get baptized with the Holy Ghost. The sign of tongues no longer is around. We're going to we're going to stop going down that rabbit trail there. The gift of the Holy Spirit, though, the sealing of our salvation, the earnest of our inheritance, according to Ephesians chapter 1, verse 13 and 14, is the Holy Spirit. They recognized the Holy Spirit was poured out upon those uncircumcised Gentiles, that they had indeed gotten saved. Peter reminded them of the scripture on the matter. God the Father promised this through God the Son, Jesus Christ, that he would send God the Holy Spirit down here to seal. He reminded them that God had already done the exact same thing for all of them. And if he did it for all of them, he could do it for these people as well. And at the same time, you know what else he did? He reminded them that we are all supposed to be yielding to God. Now sometimes people are going to know what's best. Sometimes people are going to know what you are doing is not right. But if you are following God's lead, it might hurt. It might prove to be a huge hindrance for people because it's not what they want. But if it's what God wants, if it's what God directs, Father knows best. Don't worry about the people who know best. Worry about following the Lord. Yeah, it may lead you into a direction that you would have never, ever thought of. But beyond that open door that God has opened for you, as the song says, there's a new and fresh anointing. Hear the Spirit calling. Go on. See what He's got for you. Don't worry about those who know best. The Father knows best. You'll find that it leads to full acceptance. Verse number 18. When they heard these things, they held their peace. The same bunch who back here in the beginning of the chapter, verse 2 and 3, who were getting all over Peter for daring to go to the, the Gentiles, the uncircumcised, the unwashed masses, find themselves having to hold their peace. Oh, I stopped early. It goes on to say, and glorified God, saying... Then hath God also to the Gentiles granted repentance unto life. They couldn't resist the overwhelming testimony given to them. They couldn't resist the, the fact that it's Peter and six others who are testifying of this. Plus the Holy Spirit about to beat out of their chest. This is what I determined. This is what I wanted. They couldn't argue with him. Now those people who think they know best, they can cross their arms and stamp their feet and I'm gonna mumble and I'm gonna groan. I'm gonna take my ball and go home and 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 I ain't gonna talk to you no more. And how dare you do something that ain't what I want? You know what? That that's between them and God. And and and, and that it, it it's gonna hurt when they decide to do that. Okay, been there, done that. Got the T-shirt, still doesn't fit. But that's their issue with God. We can get hung up on their issue, and all that's going to do is hinder us. If we're going to go with a full acceptance, we're not going to worry about what, the, what they're going to say. We're going to go with God. If they want to enter into full acceptance, they're going to go with God. Because they're either going to fully accept what God's got, or they're just going to turn their nose up and walk away. 
or they're going to insist upon coming, dragging her feet, kicking and screaming, and, and complaining up a storm the entire way, and, and ah, fine, I'm coming along for the ride, but I don't like it. <laughs> They'll either get to the point where they like it, or they continue to not like it, and they finally walk away. God will take care of the situation one way or the other. Our responsibility, yeah, church, our responsibility is to follow God because God knows best. Peter didn't understand what was going on at first. This massive sheet being lowered down, filled with all these animals in it that God in the Mosaic Law had commanded them not to eat because they were unclean. And, and, and now all of a sudden, praise God for chapter number 10. Because chapter number 10 opens the door for bacon. Amen. Because pigs and hogs were unclean. Now God is, is saying, hey, y'all go ahead and do it. And I love bacon. It's the fifth food group. And I think Peter got him a piece of bacon and he realized, that, you know what? That's, that's what's going on here. That's it. I... I they offered me a slice of bacon, and, and I, yep, I, I'm all in now. <laughs> I don't know, I'm just, I'm just throwing that out there. But church, when God leads us something, it might cost us some friends, it, it might hurt some people's feelings, uh, people may doubt us, they, they, they may not understand what's going on, that's okay. So long as we're following God, that's what matters. Don't worry about those who know best. Don't worry about what God wants. I've got just two questions here in a statement for you in closing. Number one, are we following the Lord? Number two, are we helping others or hindering their work for the Lord? And the statement's this, it may not be what we think or the way we expect, but if it is with God, it is best that we go along with God and not ourselves. Heavenly Father, we do thank you, Lord, once again for loving us and saving us. We do pray, Lord, for your blessings upon this day. I believe, Lord, this is a sermon you'd have us to bring to your people today and we hope and pray, Father, that everyone here was able to get exactly what it is that they needed out of the sermon here this morning. Help us, Lord, please, to be obedient to you and follow your holy will. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen and amen. Let's sing the song without him here in closing this morning. <clears throat> Without him, I could do nothing. Without him, I'd surely fail. Without him, I would be drifting like a ship without a sail. Jesus, oh Jesus, how do you know him today? You can't turn him away. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Without him, how lost I would be. Without him, I could be dying. Without him, I'd be enslaved. Without him, Life would be hopeless, but with Jesus, thank God I'm saved. Jesus, oh Jesus, how do you know him today? You can't turn him away, oh Jesus, oh Jesus, without him, how lost. I could be without him how lost I would be amen amen I thank you for your attention may the good Lord go with you throughout the course of your week and please do not forget
This is just supplemental material. If you've got a regular church that you can go to today, please make sure you go. Not forsaken the assembling of ourselves together. In other words, get to church. <laughs> hey Amen. I understand if you can't go physically, you know, watch there online. If your church don't have a live stream, uh, find a church that does. But don't rely solely here upon Garage Baptist. We're just trying to be a help, not a replacement. Abba Father, we thank you, Lord, one more time for being so good to us, for loving us and saving us. We do pray, Lord, for your blessings upon this day. Help us, Father, please, to be obedient to you. And we ask your Father for all the prayer requests that you take care of them as you see fit. And we ask your Father for your blessings upon all the upcoming VBSs that will be taking place, that souls will be saved and lives changed. And that the, these young children that begin to, to cultivate a, a fellowship between them and Jesus. We love you, Lord, in Jesus' name we do pray. Amen and amen. <clears throat>